but let's go and test it out, see how we did. So, um, guys, it's a very basic formula I just want to go through now. Obviously, horizontal translation is going to be something different. But when we're just graphing our regular line, what we want to make sure that we do is just follow a very simple, important process. The first thing is to find our amplitude. Okay, remember, the amplitude is going to be your absolute value of A. Remember, A is going to be whatever number you have in front of your, in front of your function. So in this case, we're going to have the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. However, we do notice that since we have a negative, we are going to have now a reflection about the x-axis. And let's see here. Then the next thing we need to do is find our period. Now, for a sine and cosine graph, the period is 2 pi over b. Remember, v is going to be your number in front of your x. So in this problem, we have our b is 6. So I'll write 2 pi over 6, which equals pi over 3. Cool with that. Everybody should be able to do that for all these problems. There's no reason that we can't get it, uh, get this information. Okay, it's just simple, you know. Uh, it's just your simple, you know, rules for each of your graphs. You guys need to know how to do. So now let's get into the graphing part of it, which is going to get a little more difficult. Oh, one last thing. So if my period is pi over three, I have remember four important points in a period, right? So what I always want to do is always want to take your period and divide it by four. So I divide by 4, now I have to multiply by the reciprocal, and the important points are pi over 12. And um, that's going to help me graph it, I'll show you why. So here's a graph, we have an x and y axis. I notice my amplitude is negative 2, or my amplitude actually is 2. Remember, amplitude tells you the distance up and down from your x axis. So you're going to go up 1, 2, down 1, down 2. So all it does is tells you the distance that your graph is going to travel from your x-axis. The period is going to tell you how long it takes your graph to complete one cycle. Okay? So what it's going to take your graph to get to one cycle then, because after one cycle, it just keeps on repeating itself over and over. Um, so we have that. And then I said, remember, that each important part is pi over 12 between each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to split our period up into four equal parts. Okay, our period is now split up into four equal parts, where each distance between each part is pi over 12. Okay, so let's do this, let's just add this up. So the first is from here to here, so this first point is pi over 12. So the distance between these two is also pi over 12. So if I say pi over 12 plus pi over 12 is what? 2 pi over 12. So the next point is 2 pi over 12, which is actually what? Pi over 6, right? Then, to get to the next point, again, the same distance. It's also pi over 12 again. So pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12 is 3 pi over 12, which is pi over 4. Then, if I add another pi over 12, right, because remember, all these distances are all the same. So if I add another pi over 12, it's going to give me 4 pi over 12, which reduces down to pi over 3. So does everybody see how I found those four important points? Okay? You guys need to know that these are equal distances. I'm going to erase them because I don't want my graph to be too crowded. But you just need to understand the distance between your points is exactly the same. All right, we know that a sine graph crosses at our x and y axis, and we know that usually it heads up to find the maximum, but since this is a reflection, I'm now going to go down, and that's it. That's all for my graph. So therefore, there are four important points for the sine graph, is you're going to have your minimum, you're going to have the x-axis, you're going to have the maximum, and you're going to have the end of the period. So it simply looks like that. Then to continue, if I just want to keep on continuing, remember each important point <clears throat> is just going to be adding pi over 12. So this is going to be 5 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12, which is pi over 2. Right? So you guys can just keep on adding pi over 12. If you want to go in the negative direction, now it's negative pi over 12. 
to a negative 2 pi over 12. All right? And then all I'm simply doing is just going to continue my graph. Okay, does everybody see how I finish that up? Yes, Paul. Why do you divide on the three pi over three by four? Because there's four important points inside of a period of a sine and a cosine. Oh, so it's all, all this point. Right. And the four important points mean different things for sine or cosine, but you guys need to know how you can divide them in. Yes. And that's how you look at reflection. And that's what it looked like with the reflection, yes. If it wasn't a reflection, it would have gone up, okay. down, like that. Cool?